What's up, everybody? Thralls Melly here once again. I'm the Croc Dank. I'm Jam and John. And we have yet another album review for you. So, one that I definitely had my eyes on because I brought up this band in collection updates, and man, are, are they excellent at what they do, uh, was the latest offering from Eternal Rot, Moribound. This also comes on the 28th of July on Memento Mori Records. This band formed in 2012 in both Poland and England, so we have an international act. This is their third full length overall. I own one of them and I own their amazing split with the band Coffins, which I can't think of a better fucking matchup for them to do yeah. a split with. And believe me, both sides of that split are fucking gross because this is just foul, dingy death doom to fester and rot in a grave too. This is just disgusting and I know we probably said a lot of the same shit when we went over <laughs> Gateway and we're probably gonna touch on some of that again, but uh, man, this is just gross. Yeah, I mean, pure fucking filth straight out of a coffin, like a corpse climbs out of a coffin and then summons the other corpses out of the coffin and then they all get on the mic together and just vomit. Yeah, the vocals on here were definitely a thing that I highlighted when I went over Eternal Rod and those collection updates because, oh my god, they are the most over-the-top death metal, death doom vocals I think I have ever heard. Again, uh, layered, reverbed, lots of sustain on all the long, yeah. drawn-out growls. I don't even know if there's fucking lyrics. I, <laughs> you know I, I'm not entirely sure because these vocals are so fucking inhuman, it sounds like a choir of demonic hell pigs. I mean, yeah, this could be like another Besserus type thing where it's not words, it's just... It is absolutely fucking wretched. Remember that scene where Sigourney Weaver speaks in the Zool voice to... Bill Murray, yeah. it's like that, except it's just, you know, cavernous and kind of belched and, I don't know, like, even grosser. And, again, layered. In fact, I would say the vocals supply, like, almost like 50% of the atmosphere in here. Oh, yeah. To be honest with you, I think the vocals are what makes this death doom. Because without those vocals, sludge. Pure fucking sludge. I definitely hear sludge. I definitely hear like almost kind of stoner doom or just flat out doom, especially on songs like Lurker in the Morgue. My God, there is just a flat out, like almost kind of Church of Misery style, oh, yeah. just heavy doom riff that is absolutely catchy. And that was kind of the thing that, I mean, it kind of caught me off guard a bit because I know their other albums are catchy, but I think. This one just feels a bit hookier as far as the riffs, but this is a very hooky album for what it is. Really, in my opinion, from Swollen Corpse Adoration on, it's just full of fucking hooky riffs. Like, the melodies are catchy, and you wouldn't think that to be the case on a fucking Death Doom record. Like, normally it's just down-tuned fucking evil filth, which it is, but it's also really, really, really catchy. Yeah, and uh, the production for what they're going for, I think, is pretty damn good. Like, the guitar tone is fucking thicker than a snicker. Like, it is just monumentally it's, heavy. It's thick with two Cs. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and the bass, while it's not super distinct, you can definitely feel the presence of the low end. The drums are heavy, though I will admit sometimes the snare gets a little bit lost in the din of soundscapes and... Uh, demonic hell gurgles. Well, that's because it's so heavily reverbed. In fact, the first track, Summoned from Moribund Delusions, it starts out with cavernous, isolated drums. Just <laughs> fucking, like, they're playing in a tomb. Yep, or a, like a giant fucking crypt, or a cave covered in moss and snot and uh, other horrible things that probably don't smell good. Like, muddier than a kid's shoes after a rainstorm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, th this is murky as hell, but again, mixed well. Like, the levels are really appropriate in terms of, like, being able to hear everything. And the use of atmosphere, like, in between tracks or opening tracks or sometimes in the middle of tracks <laughs> is really good because I don't know, like, all right, there's something about this, of course, that is just naturally unsettling because it is Death Doom and it sounds haunting and disturbing, like, you know, Hooded Menace, Incantation, again, Gateway. But there's also what I feel is like a layer of, like, kind of self-aware camp. Like, there's yeah. a campy fun to this that they know they're just going above and beyond to make this the most outlandish sounding Death Doom possible. And I don't know, like, I, I think this is like, the Evil Dead 2 of 
of Death Doom albums. Sure, sure. Because, you know, it's it's kind of that, you know, it's gorier than hell, but man, why am I laughing? And it's not because I'm just a twisted fuck. Like, this is legit I mean, it funny. is. I mean, but, it could be. But, I mean, yeah, if you're gonna do something, fucking do it. Like, go for it. And they definitely went for it. The vocals are hammed up to the nines, but, like, why not? But yeah, even without the vocals, which... There's really not a moment I'm here without the vocals. But underneath, like, at the end of Summon from Moribund Delusions, there are ghostly choirs, like, <laughs> woo, like in the background. But yeah. it's, you know, layered with, you know, again, the giant belches and gurgles and snorts and pukes. And, again, it has this just creepy, dingy atmosphere, but quite possibly the one that stood out the most to me, and just for, like, the simple way they did it, uh, Desecrated Guts, which is one of the heaviest tracks in here, like just more yeah, death metal chugs to it. Yep. Still got the doomy flavor to it, but it, it feels a little bit more death metal centric. But at the beginning of that song, there are slowed down Gregorian chants that kind of fade in. And Gregorian chants already sound creepy because that just sounds like, you know, uh, creepy church, which I mean, most churches are kind of creepy, but that's extra creepy. But as they go on, of course, you notice they are pitch corrected and slowed down, which I'm pretty sure the vocals are too. Uh, you get this demonic chatter that comes in underneath it, like it slowly fades in before the song starts chugging your face off. And honestly, it's just one of the most unsettling starts to any song on yep. here. I think the beginning sounds actually like the corpse of Andre the Giant singing in the shower. It's like they dropped a mic down into an abandoned mine shaft full of feral pigs. It's just, huh. again, horrific. <laughs> and the way they layer everything, because, I mean, the vocals attract multiple times. Like, if this was like a 60s doo-wop band in terms of, like, the layered vocals and choirs, this would be Stanky Valley and the Four Legions. Like, it's just fucking absolutely sickening. But there are some drawbacks to it. While I love the effect, and it makes this album haunting, twisted, and, again, inhuman like fucking inhuman <laughs> at times i kind of wanted the vocals to be scaled back yep. just because man underneath all that and sometimes you do have to go digging a bit are some absolutely killer riffs and really solid song structure mostly in the in the last track lurker in the morgue that riff is absolutely filthy because in the beginning i'll be honest like in the beginning i wrote i love the vocals they power over everything but when you get into the back half of the album, especially where the melody picks up with these riffs, like I just wish that they would have toned it down a little bit, especially in the last track with that filthy riff. Like it's cool, but man, there's so many moments with these down tune riffs or fucking tremolos or, or just that filthy chug that's over everything where it would have been really cool to hear that. Absolutely. And honestly, the song before it, uh, Just Just Never Recalled, that song opened up a little bit faster, a little bit chuggier, like, you know, definitely some hooded menace influence there. And I liked the fun kind of spooky chugs. Like, it kind of reminded me of, like, the skeleton dance sort of melody. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, again, it's kind of like that camp factor. Like, it sounds catchy. It's a little bit more upbeat. And there's some really cool syncopated breakdowns in there, but with the vocals kind of not following the meter, like, because they're just, like, a cavernous howl out into the fucking bogs and swamps and marshes of uh, England, I guess. Eh, Poland's probably got them, too. But it makes them kind of hard to follow, and sometimes that snare gets buried by, you know, all the gurgles and layers, because, I mean, there's so much attention to the vocals on here <laughs> being, like, the big standout creep factor on here. And another thing I wanted to point out that I probably should have pointed out earlier was, although I really like the vocals, they're, they're very entertaining. They really are. <laughs> yes. With with these kind of riffs and these kind of melodies, like, because I asked you where they were from, it sounds very southern, like southern Louisiana, like NOLA type stuff. Like, I'm hearing like old crowbar or like spirit caravan or even some later down records like i could hear wino singing over this too which i guess would make it less death doom and more doom but like i could definitely hear southern style riffing and sludge yeah no i could hear like robert lowe from uh saul tuta turnus singing over this almost yeah. perfectly i mean it would probably need to be a little bit crisper but that also is kind of a cool thing about here is when it comes down to the riff structure, 
They do enough to make these more doom-laden riffs sound death metal in spots, especially on Reflected in Perpetual Waves of Despair. Great fucking song title. That mm -hmm. kind of encapsulates the entire song. But instead of just playing like these straightforward, like, you know, more droney, chuggy riffs, they actually add tremolo riffs every now and then to more doom-laden melodies. So it kind of gives it like a slight death metal spin on a flat-out doom metal riff. Mm. And yeah, that, that kind of just makes it more doomy. Yeah, it gives it more of an incantation vibe. Yeah, and I like some of the fun transitions on here, especially on Swollen Corpse Adoration, which I don't know what part of the corpse is swollen that they're talking about, and I don't know if I want to know. Not going to dig deeper. No, you probably have to dig lower. Uh, yeah, yeah, there you go. But there's a really cool transition to, like, honestly, probably the most, like, Sabbath-y riffs on the entire album. Like, they kind of get into these little crawls that just scream Iomi while the vocalist screams about something else. But yeah, that kind of just adds, like, again, this layer of fun to something that uh, probably not intended as being, like, super fun. But I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know. know. Dude, I feel that, like it is. I don't know. Those vocals are really... It, it's it's campy. Yeah. Like, and that, that's not a bad thing. I'm not saying that's a bad thing at all. I was grossly entertained by this grossness. It might be. I don't, I don't know how you'd take this overly seriously like yeah like i granted i imagine that they had the intention of making a really heavy doomy record but they did. like and they definitely did but i don't know how you can take like dude the beginning of reflected in perpetual waves of despair sounds to me like the way that thriller should have sounded when it opened like you get vincent price laughing over that and you'd be like that is truly disturbing we got that weird string skipping and like uh, there's like a I don't know, like, again, like, they do a lot with, like, pitch correction and shit like that. I mean, it's it's almost very, like, theatrical. Like, it is. Yep. It is. It is 100% theatrical. And I, I think, like, again, like, I, I think of Death Doom, I think of something dark and oppressive and sinister. And I still get that here, but there's another layer of, like, charm to this. Yep. Like, it is legit fun to listen to. Like, I could listen to this for, you know, completely different reasons than I would listen to, say, like, Hooded Menace or something like sure. that, where everything is just dark and dingy. Like, you want to hear something gross, but it's fun? That's this. Good luck getting people past the vocals on here, because these are vocals for people that are seasoned in death metal and, and horror movies. And horror movies, because getting some fucking straight that's only been listening to, like, more melodic stuff, that, oh, I like sung vocals, they can be a little bit harsh, like, oh, then you aren't going to like you're a second gonna, of this. Nope, you're really going to despise these vocals. In fact, good luck sleeping at night, because I'm pretty sure this voice is going to crawl in your fucking ear and get your brain pregnant with nightmares. So, overall, I'm going to give this four stars. I was very entertained, and you will be too. I really strongly suggest you check this out. If nothing else, it is vocally entertaining. Whether or not he's saying real words, I don't give a fuck, because it's, it's a lot of fun. It's oddly hooky, despite its sound and intentions, because I don't know if that's necessarily what they were going for, but these lovely, sludgy, fucking heavy riffs are just gross, but it's super nice to listen to. While I do love the vocals and how they power over everything, I'm not so necessarily sure that I want it to power over everything because there are some amazing riffs going on in here. The atmosphere, though, is amazing. The layers upon layers upon layers of gross, vomiting corpses is somehow an aesthetic to this, and that may be because it is a little campy. I enjoy that. There is a lot more melody and hook than I initially expected. I definitely recommend you check this out if you're a fan of, uh, you know, Crowbar, Down, Gateway, 100% Gateway, especially for that atmosphere. Incantation, hell, even Black Sabbath. In fact, I'm pretty certain this is what happens when you play a Sabbath record backwards. Yeah. But yeah, I definitely recommend you check this out. Go out, take a listen, see for yourself. I'm almost sure that if you like death doom and grimy fucking death metal i'm sure the mix of that is something you're really gonna enjoy i am with them uh four stars i really enjoyed this uh the riffs are excellent but i mean again that vocal performance i'm reasonably sure that this gentleman belches forth green putrid fog every time he utters a <laughs> word and i imagine it probably doesn't smell good either but uh yeah like this is just 
I don't know, oddly kind of fun for something that is so dark and sinister and ugly. The more I listened to this, the more I was, you know, kind of thinking about how much I really like that new Church of Misery album, and for the same reasons. The riffs. Yeah. Those big, thick, gnarly riffs, and these kind of almost bluesy melodies that pop up. Like, I wasn't necessarily expecting that. It's kind of been a part of their sound, but I think their other releases have been just way more on the death metal side just doom was kind of more of the pace and the atmosphere this time i think the doom metal really shines here and man uh the vocalist does his best to cast a murky shadow over everything he which does. it it adds so much like in fact you know the vocals add so much atmosphere to this and all the weird little soundscapes they do with his vocals and sound effects like it makes this album like really fucking creepy and unsettling, but again, in a kind of fun fucking way. As much as I liked Gateway's album, and I'm not really knocking it at all because I do really dig that album, uh, this one brings more riffs to the table. Mm -hmm. And it still brings that same amount of atmosphere. So yeah, I, I, I like this a lot. I'm really not surprised by that because I liked their other stuff. And again, that split with Coffins is fucking amazing. If you were a big fan of Hooded Menace and fucking, God, like acid bath occasionally too. Uh, every slow murky part in a fucking Soylent Green song, <laughs> Crowbar, uh, and Gateway. Yeah, I'm just plug Gateway too. Go get Gateway too. Get this and get Gateway and turn off the lights and <laughs> get a fog machine. Ooh. And uh, yeah, listen to it because it'll be fun. And watch horror movies too, that'll probably help. <laughs> so if you enjoyed this review, Give it a thumbs up, and if you were new to the channel, subscribe, because we do stuff like this all, all the, the time. time. We are also on Patreon. If you'd like to help us out there, there's a link down below to thrallsmetal.com where our Patreon link would be, but it is currently under construction. You can find our Patreon link on our channel. But once the site is back up, we hopefully will have some shirts to sell, and we will probably announce that with a whole look at the shirts we got video and a giveaway that will coincide with that. So yeah uh that's all coming i don't know relatively soon but yeah we just got to get some stuff done and uh well i mean of course constantly working on content for you guys because man there's a lot of stuff coming up and yes huh? dude yeah the release schedule is gonna get fucking gnarly dude so. september is gonna be insane oh yeah i mean august oh, might be insane august too. is insane too but september is gonna be insane i'm gonna have to fucking listen to more metal I'm going to have to feed monster drinks into my veins because I don't know how we're covering all that. But yeah, tons of stuff coming. And of course, thank you guys so much for all the support, liking, subscribing, all that shit. It means the fucking world to us. Indeed. Uh, yeah, again, uh, this channel's growth is pretty much due to you guys and we appreciate the living shit out of you. I'm going to keep this relatively short. So once again, thank you all and we will catch you later. <laughs>